I'm standing outside the Royal Canadian Mint in Ottawa, an iconic building where, since 1908, coins have been produced for collectors, for investors, and until 1976, for circulation in Canada as well. Today's a special day for me because we're not just going to be staying outside, I've been invited inside for a behind-the-scenes tour, and I'm looking forward to taking you with me as we take a look behind the scenes at the Royal Canadian Mint. Well, I can see the Mint has a new protective services officer guarding the entrance, but I think he's going to let us in. We're in the boutique where behind the glass, some of the coins being produced today by the Royal Canadian Mint are on display. There are coins with colorful designs, there are coins double struck proof. There's obviously a lot of workmanship that goes into creating these coins, and we've been invited to go see how they're made. Let's go take a look. We're in the engraving department. This to me seems like the heart and soul of the Royal Canadian Mint. This is where the art is being transformed and moving a big step towards becoming coins. I'm here with senior engraver Susan Taylor and I know there have been a lot of changes here. You've been with the Mint how long Susan? I've been with the Mint for approximately 30 years. What kind of changes have you seen in that time? Uh, in the time that I've been here I've seen uh, work from plasticine to wax plaster to working in a digital environment. Can you showcase for us in front of us, I know we've got some of the old ways that the coins used to be produced. What's going on here? Well, what we have going on here is first we have an artboard that we work with. It acts like a blueprint and it tells the engraver what we are, what the design should look like and how we should interpret it into 2.5D. What we have here is a wax plaster we will scope in the design into the wax plaster, and from there we will pour a, po a positive rubber mold, and then to a, an epoxy, um, black epoxy negative. This is what was put up on this reducing machine, mm -hmm. and from the reducing machines, we would reduce it down to an intermediate size. It's called the brass intermediate. You'll notice that it is negative, and that it still, it is, uh, we added the uh, lettering and the curvature at this point. From there, it goes back up on the, on the reducing machine and we will cut in the uh, negative sh uh, shape into the matrix. That will be the actual size. This will then be polished and enhanced by the engraver and heat treated. And then we take a soft piece of steel that is in specially shaped and from there we will hog or force material into the matrix to produce a raised punch. I can see behind us that there is a virtual world of engraving. Does the same kind of craftsmanship go into engraving this way? Absolutely it does. What's wonderful about uh, working in a virtual environment is uh, we're able to uh, work uh, with the same great amount of detail, if not, if not even greater detail. We can really examine the subtlety by actually being able to enlarge the area that we want to zoom in and add more detail. We can actually move this around so that we can see exactly how much relief we have. We can also take it from a positive to a negative environment. And now you can see that we actually have a, a positive model to, to scope into. Susan, I want to reach over and grab that model that you showed me earlier. 
done in 1936 by Kruger Gray for Canada's original one cent coin introduced in 1937. I love this on the back autograph 1936. I wonder what Kruger Gray would have thought if he could have seen this technology being applied to his design today. I think he would have approved of it very much. He would have realized that we are able to capture the same amount of wonderful detail of being able to apply the same positive and negative shape to subtle nuances and at the same time we have been able to eliminate over 30 hazardous chemicals from our work plate. It's a much safer, much more ergonomically friendly environment to work in and I'm very pleased to be have been a part of that. It looks like a great place to work and it looks like you're enjoying what you're doing very much. And I want to thank you for putting together some of these most incredible coins that we've been enjoying as collectors for so many years. You're thank you, Susan. You're welcome. It's my pleasure. We're in the laser room. I'm here with Walter. How are you doing, Walter? I'm doing great. Excellent. He's operating a laser which is creating the finish on one of Canada's proof dollar coins for next year. Uh, this is a room that I never knew existed. This is really cool stuff seeing this happening. Tell me what's going on here. The frosting on the queen, queen's face, for example, it would be applied with sandblasting before, masked out. But with the laser, it's a bit, we have a bit map, and the laser just applies to the area that's needed. Unbelievable how so, quickly yeah, this is it, being done. It takes about five minutes. For five the, minutes. Yeah, the whole for thing. the process to go through, whereas before it would take at least an hour and a half. Big difference. Yeah. I'm just taking a look right now, watching the portrait of Queen Elizabeth being lasered. I wonder if that's the Queen's secret to keeping looking youthful on all of our coins. She looks great. It's going to be a great coin. We're in the next stage of dye production. I'm here with Jean-Luc, and he's got one of the proof dyes that he's working on here. Jean-Luc, what's going on with this? This step of the dye production is called dye polishing. It consists in taking a, a dye that we received from the, uh, from the furnace, and then depending on what the engineer would wishes us to have appear on the, on the dye itself. So in this case, being approved, so the, the queen the letters and the flat are all frosted with laser. And so we had to polish the field to a mirror finish. No scratches, no pits, nothing. Can we see you doing it? Can we see you working on it? When you see that brilliant shine on the Royal Canadian Mint coins, this is one of the steps along the way. I'm here with Remy in one of the storage vaults at the Royal Canadian Mint. Behind me, there are a whole pile of these huge bars that have come in from customers to be refined into pure gold. Now, of course, they're not pure here yet. Remy, can you tell us how the magic happens so that we get these wonderful pure gold products out of these rough bars? Sure. Uh, to get to this point, first of all, we get uh, the... Uh the deposit from the customer. We melt it initially uh, to be able to get a sample and to, uh, to know the, the purity of, of the bar. We melt it into these bars, the pre-melt bars, uh, and with these we make recipes to be able to refine to another step. So we refine it through chlorination into an anode, which is 99.5% pure. And with this, we do the final step uh, to be able to bring the gold to a 4.9 uh, purity. Can I touch it? Sure. This is neat stuff. A little bit like dessert, but you don't want to eat that one. No. That's pure gold uh, through the electrolysis process or chlorination process. Yep. And uh, with these cathodes, we are able to uh, melt them in a very clean furnace to be able to produce these wonderful products that we got. We got the 100 ounce bar right here the kilo bar, the 400 ounce bar, and uh, the, uh, the gold grain that we use for uh, various jewelers and things like that. So the Royal Canadian Mint has taken the rough gold, they've purified it, and it's ready to go into the melting pot, ready to be poured into big bars that can then be transformed into our collector coins and bullion coins. I understand that we're going to be able to see them pouring the gold. Let's go over to the pouring room and see how it happens. 
We're standing in front of the molten gold, and I want to get close and see how it's done. They've given me some protective gear. Let me take my protective gear and get this on, because it's worth doing it to see it close up. Okay, we're here with Serge, ready to pour a great big big bar. Serge, tell me what's going on here. Uh, right now we're going to be setting up uh, a GML. Uh, well, from there we're going to go and scarf it, and then we're going to send it over to the rolling room. From there we're going to set up uh, what's our trade coin GML, or our uh, collectible fine gold coins. This is all pure gold in here. It's all pure gold in here. And these are huge bars. And how many of these bars are you going to be pouring in the next few minutes? The next uh, little while? 10 bars in total on the average. 10 bars at a time. Let's see these bars being poured. need to cool before you're ready to take it out? Uh, it can take anywhere between two to three minutes until it's cooled down. It's not too long. Two to three minutes until it's cooled down, then we throw it into water. So, Excellent. I love the look of these as they come out and they're red hot. There's just something awesome about that gold being red hot like that. There it is. Spectacular. Glowing sun of gold. Still red hot. Here we are, the Royal Canadian Mint's pouring room, taking a look at huge gold bars that have just been produced. Four nines, pure gold, a little over 800 ounces each. That's like $1.4 million, and they're still pouring more. Let's go take a look and see what they're gonna do with these bars. Here we are in the Concast room. In front of me lies a huge stack of gold bars that I think would have even made King Tut's jaw drop absolutely pure gold, ready to be brought to the next level. Let's see them melt these down again and bring these to the next stage in our process. Let's pass that on into the melting pot. That is one serious furnace. Gold bars have been fed into the furnace, and here it's coming out in a continuous cast. This to me is unbelievable. Just a continuous, endless strip of solid, pure gold. I'm in front of the rolling mill with Joey. Joey, that's a big chunk of gold here. Can you tell me how much gold is in this coil? It's approximately uh, 14,500 ounces. 14,500 ounces. That's like $25 million worth of gold right here. What's happening in this machine? Uh, right now we're rolling it. Uh, we get the co coils from Concast at 14 millimeter. We use our mill to roll it to, to the gauge of the, the one ounce GML, the maple leaf. Then they, when we're done, it goes to the cutter and they cut the blanks from there. Interesting. This is where we go down from the thick gold into the right thickness to be able to create our blanks ready to go into either gold maple leaves or collector coins. Very cool. Hey Mike, how are you? Hi Steve, good, you? Excellent. Well, we're halfway through our visit to the rolling room and we're with Mike operating the blanking press. Mike, can you tell me what's happening here? Absolutely. Basically, this machine's pulling this roll of silver through the die set, and it can go up to 100 strokes per minute. So basically translated about 300 to 400 per minute, and it falls onto a conveyor belt, and then on to the next process. Starting to look like coins, getting pretty close. I have a whole bin in front of me of blanks that have just come out from the blanking machine. They look pretty good just the way they are, but they're still not ready to be made into coins. First, they go through another process to make sure the surface is just right. Let's take a look and see what they do. Did you ever wonder how the coins from our Royal Canadian Mint end up with that absolutely brilliant, dazzling finish? Well, the first stage of that happening is going on right here. I'm with Anne at the polishing station, the polishing of the blanks. Anne, can you tell us what's going on here? Yep, in here we have the small and medium bearings. If you'd like, you can take a handful. They're like little satellites and little round balls all together in with the blanks. Yep. And what's going to happen in here? 
These are polishing the plants just before it gets to Can you turn this on and watch it and we can watch yes. what's happening? We're seeing here at the Royal Canadian Mint that there's a combination of old world craftsmanship and absolutely the newest in the world of technology. Here we are at some of the clean rooms where the finest quality coins are being produced for collectors. I've asked to go inside and they've told me I gotta suit up to do this. We're inside the clean room now, and it looks a lot more like a lab than it does a factory. I'm with Jason at one of the presses. Jason, what's going on here? Well, as you can see, we all have our, our gear on to prevent the coins from being contaminated from dust, and this way we can produce the best quality coins. Can we see them happening? Absolutely. in trouble if I show this because it's not coming out till next year. But this is an absolutely beautiful coin. We're in the shipping department where there's a lot of activity going on. A lot of coins getting ready to be shipped out to collectors. This is one that I know that we have a lot of collectors looking forward to seeing. I'm putting it in a box. Ready to go out. Let me seal it up. And I've taken a little bit of liberty to make sure that this one is going to the right place. 